Welcome and good morning. My name is Andrea Andy Handy. I'm a learning and development consultant here and your facilitator for today. And we are going to be going over cascade tips um, of the month, essentially. So each month we'll be coming out with new content and new videos um, to learn a little bit more into cascade. So this particular session is on editing photos and uploading them to cascade. So here is our agenda for today, navigation review. So in order to upload photos to Cascade, you have to remember how to locate your page in Cascade. Um, essentially, you find it the same way as we did in our beginner session, but I am gonna go over some review. Um, we're gonna talk about recommended photo settings. So this way, it's, it makes it really easy if you find a photo online or one of our free sites, um, we will give you the dimensions that we recommend. So it doesn't, it takes out a lot of the guesswork for you on how to size your pictures. And then we're going to go over two photo applications. So we are going to talk about the photo app and we're going to talk about Photoshop. Now, um, you should have one of these. Now, I believe if you're using a Mac, um, the photo app, I don't believe is available on it, but you can submit a ticket to Photoshop or the Creative Cloud and get access to that. So those are the two we're going over. Um, there are several more that you can use that you uh, can absolutely continue to implement and, and edit your photos, but these are the two that we found were the, the easiest, um, especially for our, our new users and even the intermediate and advanced. And then we're gonna create some image folders in Cascade and then we're gonna upload folders to Cascade and full or upload photos and create folders in Cascade. That's probably the trickiest part of this whole session. So what you need to know, this is review from the beginner session. So I have access to this PowerPoint. We will not be using the entire PowerPoint for the entire session, but I do have it created to include everything that we cover so I can send it to you once we're done. We're also recording it so that way we can uh, put it up on our YouTube channel and then have time uh, stamps to let you know what is included and where it is included. Um, I would recommend, Isabel is asking if you should take notes. I would recommend take notes on what you feel is important. I do have notes in the slides uh, for you. I, I tried to be as detailed as possible, but unfortunately, uh, I, I, I do get feedback sometimes that there's there's a few items that may be missing. And so I feel like it's included, but yes, and hopefully we can put some additional notes even in the chat or questions. So we have practices for pictures. So here's a few things that we just need to keep in mind. Do not upload directly from your phone. The pictures are gonna be too large. It's not gonna create a great user experience. And to be honest with you, um, not until you're at advanced level, would you probably wanna really use Cascade um, from your mobile device or even upload and avoid uploading large files. And so that's the whole reason we're having this, this session is for one is the files become so large that what happens is um, the whole website can get affected. And so the pictures don't download properly. They take a long time. People get frustrated when they're using the website and that's what we're trying to prevent. But then also allow you to create a really dynamic and visually appealing website and use a photo application to edit your photos. There are in some occasions where um, I've spoken with people and they're able to find a free website, one of those free stock photo websites that I've listed below here. These are really cool. Um, and I'll go over what they are in a moment, but if you can find the size that you need, it's fantastic. You don't have to edit your photo at all. If they have the size that you're already looking for, um, I would say nine times out of 10, you're gonna need to edit it. So if you take a peek down here, Um, so I'm, I'm getting a question if somebody's taking a picture like from, and I'm, I think that might be a phone. If you, you can take pictures from your phone, you can take pictures from your camera. You just don't want to upload it directly from there. You want to upload it perhaps onto your computer, then edit it before putting it on Cascade. And if that answers your question, Rhea, please let me know. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So these websites, I like to use these because sometimes we don't have stock photos that you're looking for. Um, so Pexels, Pixabay, Elements and Photo are really cool if you're looking for um, various pictures, especially Elements and Vado has some really cool cascade icons 
So if you're looking for icons, you're creating a, your, your website where you don't necessarily need a graphic picture, um, some really cool items there that I've used or that I'm currently using to try to create our site, which I'm still learning along with you. The cppconto.com. Now this one is actually a Cal Poly website. So there are pictures of Cal Poly faculty and students and uh, locations on campus. And this, you can actually use this. The pictures are uh, free for you to use, but typically they are larger. They have a lot more pixels because they are designed for print. So once you download those pictures, you get approval, you can edit them and that's what we'll be covering as well. So these uh, recommendations, photo dimensions, this isn't a black and white rule, okay? There's some gray area here, but I wanna make sure that, um, that you have these details because when I was learning Cascade, I was like, well, what size do I do? Because I didn't know anything about editing photos whatsoever. And so I asked lots of questions and this is what developed from those questions. And this was from our Cascade group and IT group that I think will be really helpful. And so um, you don't necessarily need to know all of these right now, but this is a great, um, oops, sorry about that. Um, this is a great reference for when you're actually creating your, your site. So for Jumbotron, that's typically the large picture that you see across the website. You can do a 920 um, by 600. And if you uh, remember, some of you, if you're, you're looking at your, your television screen and you can see like the images when you have to change the image size or even on your desktop, 920 essentially takes up the entire width of the page and for Jumbotron, that's what you want. And so that's how you know you're on the right track. For slideshow, this is 960 by 450. These are the sizes that we're referring to. Now, um, how many of you have already had the opportunity to use like cards? in Cascade. Sarah, okay, great. Stephanie, now, and all of you, you've used cards. Did you have an opportunity to use pictures with those cards yet? Because you could use pictures with just text. I'm seeing some yeses here and some no's, that's okay. So cards can come in different sizes. The cards, and I'll show you what cards are if you're not familiar with the term just yet or if you haven't had the opportunity to watch the beginner video cards are basically like if you see a picture with uh bios you see different pictures with bios or um if you see different pictures of icons uh for various let's say nine i'll use nine because let's say three 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 on a website those are considered cards okay cool thanks sarah now cards could be used at various sizes, but if you want on a, on a page, the most important thing is that you keep your cards the same size. So if you're going to do yours, let's say portraits, let's say for bios, you want to make sure that you use 250 width by 400 height. Oh, I sorry, I see the pixel there. Sorry about that. Um, just make sure they're all the same size. So that way you don't have different or inconsistent pictures on your website. Now this part, I wanna share with you, though this gets a little bit like complex in terms of saving uh, pictures, but photo sizes and data. When you upload your pictures to Cascade, you want them to be in kilobytes. So if you're seeing something um, in gigabytes, which is the GB, which is probably what you'll see uh, a lot of, um, that's how we know we need to make it smaller. And so this is just additional information for you. Um, 100 to 300 kilo, kilobytes, you'll either see a KB or a K. That's what you're looking for before uploading to Cascade and you'll still have a really great picture. And then 72 DPI, this is um, dots per inch. And essentially dots per inch um, typically are designed for, let's say, they're really, really high when you're gonna print something out on paper. When you're uploading it onto a website, they don't have to have as much, so that way you can change that and make sure it, it will help with the overall size of the picture. So these are all of our recommendations. And so I'm just gonna stop for a moment and just see if we have any questions or thoughts before we move on to the next step, because we're gonna get into a lot more detail. Um, I had a question. If a picture is like about 400 to 500 kilobytes, does that make a big difference or would that be safe? I think if you have, let's say if you're only using like one picture on that particular page, I think you would be okay. Okay. Um, this is the, the goal that we're kind of shooting for. 
Got it. Thank you. Thank you for that question, Keila. Hi, Andy. This is Maria. Hi, Maria. And good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks for answering my question. So in my example, I usually, I'm, I take pictures of the staff for our updated like staff pictures. And so what you're telling me is that I can take the SIM card and then put it into the, um, to the PC and then directly then load the pictures with the correct size, of course. Yes. Right? Is that, that would be it? Okay. Yes. And so typically our cameras, our, our cameras specifically, the photos are quite large. And so you can absolutely put them on your computer and then edit them using one of the apps that we're going to go over um, oh, and then load them. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about the photos that you already have on your computer. So let's say you're already working on pictures. You've already downloaded them, but you don't know how large they are. And that's what I wanted to show you. So when you go to your picture on your computer, what you would do is you would right click on your picture. So uh, if you right click on your photo, you're gonna get some options here and at the bottom, you're gonna see properties. So when you click on properties, it provides you so many details as to what's available to you. Oops. It looks like my, my pictures or my circles a little bit off here, my apologies. And it's gonna give you some options. So you're gonna see you have general, you have security details you have a lot of options here so and i don't know why and i'm so sorry my circles are a little bit off so i'll make sure to update that before i send it over to you i'm not sure why that took place but essentially under general it tells you how large the size is which is 15 megabytes and so that's that's too large and so we need to make sure that we edit it so this is purely just seeing for pictures that you already have on your computer the other thing that you can do is if you want to look at the pixels, which we're going to be talking about, and the DPI, which we just discussed, this is what shows here. So you can say, okay, well, if I want to make a jumbotron, I know I need to change this to 1920 by 600. So I know I'm going to have to update these pixels. So, and if you need me to stop or slow down, please, um, please let me know. And this is just one helpful way to, to know how to update your pictures that you currently have on your computer. So these are the editing software that we're gonna be covering today, which is the photo app and Photoshop. Photo app, if you have, let's say um, a staff Dell computer, photo app should already be on your computer. So you can look for that now. The easiest way to do that is if you already have a picture on your computer, just pull up that picture and it will automatically pull up in the photo app. Um, another way you could do that is do a search on the bottom right hand side and type in photo and it will also populate for you as well. And then Photoshop. Now Photoshop typically won't be on your computer unless you have downloaded all of the creative Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, if you don't have that, you'll need to submit a ticket to get requested. I would recommend if you're on, if you're on this call, my assumption is, is that you're going to be using Cascade a lot. So I would start off with the photo app. It's great for beginners. And then I would ask for Photoshop to be downloaded to your computer because it's just so much, um, it's so much fun. And when you start to get into a lot more complex projects, it will save you quite a bit of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my PowerPoint. This is just a picture of the photo app and I'm just gonna share my screen with you. So let me show you, I'm just gonna pull up my pictures here, okay? So you should, and Isabel, I could just see your face if you could let me know. Can you see my pictures on my screen? If you could just shake your head yes or no. Perfect, thank you so much. So these are just some pictures. I went ahead and started organizing which ones I wanna use for Cascade and for training. So uh, you can just open up any of these pictures and they will be ready for you to go in the photo app. This is the photo app. Again, if you don't know or don't have any pictures on your computer, on the bottom left-hand side of your screen where it says type here to search, you can type photo. And that's another way that you can look for the photo app. Okay. So there's a few different ways that we can go ahead and start making these changes. And I am going to show you the easiest way that I've come up with to do that. On the top right-hand side, you're gonna see ellipses. There's three dots and you're gonna click on resize. 
Um, and what I would recommend for you is to find custom dimensions. That way you can actually type in what it is that you're looking for. So with, this is a very large picture. So this is, this picture is designed for Jumbotron or for um, a slideshow because it's so large. Taking this down to like a bio card would be very hard to do. And that's just something you'll get used to as you start working more in Cascade. So if you take a really, really large picture and you condense it to a square that's 400 by 400, that would be very difficult to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to review my dimensions here. And I'm gonna do the slideshow. So I'm gonna do 960 over 600. Now, in order for this to work, I'm gonna unclick maintain aspect ratio. That way I can do my custom numbers. And the quality right now is set to high and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it that way. And I'm just gonna save my resize copy. Now, when you're saving your pictures in, um, on your desktop, I would recommend that you are very specific about what it is that you're saving and for what. So for me, I'm going to save this as Cal Poly Clouds Banner 2. The reason you do this is because when you're uploading the photo to Cascade, it's very hard to find um, your photo if there's hundreds of them that have already been previously put there. So the more detailed you can make this, the easier it will be for you later on. And so it's saving my copy and I'm gonna go ahead and Cal Poly Banner 2. I mean, it looks really nice. It's still really great quality, even though we changed it pretty drastically, it looks good. So that's just resizing the photo in the photo app. So this is what I use to save it. Um, so if I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a slideshow, it'll be 960 by 450. And so let me just go back in because I may have saved it under the wrong dimensions. Let me just do it one more time just to make sure. Oh yes, I accidentally did it for Jumbotron. Thank you so much for bringing that up. And you always have to unselect that maintain aspect ratio. There we go. And I am going to just save it over the one that I already created. Okay, perfect. Simple, simple enough. Okay, great. This is the photo app. So you can see this isn't really complex. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do with your pictures as you become more comfortable. This is just our starting point and we can continue to build on that as we have more cascade tips. Now, the one thing that I wanna make sure when you save your picture, um, there's a few things and I didn't mention, but make sure that you do save it as a, a JPEG. So it, depending on how, because uh, I know we had mentioned taking it from your camera or from a previous uh, website, just make sure that you save that as a JPEG. So let's go ahead now, I'm gonna show you Photoshop because in here, photo app, that's all that we need to do to make those changes and we save them and we're good to go. So I'm gonna close this and now over here, I'm gonna actually type in Photoshop. So I'm gonna pull up Adobe Photoshop 2021 and this is what this looks like. Now, does anybody on this call already have Photoshop? on their computer. And if you're not sure, you can take a second and do a quick search. Oh, nice. So many of you already have it. It is confusing, Sarah, I totally agree with you. It took me some time to figure it out. I hope that I can help you. Maria, I would absolutely recommend that you submit a ticket because it, it makes life. Um, yes, thank you for sharing. I, I made a note, <laughs> contact IT. Yeah, so you could submit a ticket um, and it's pr pretty, quick for them to be able to get it onto your computer and it's so, so helpful. So with, um, and I like looking at all of your pictures. So that's why you keep, if you see me go like this, I pull out all of your pictures and then put them back so I can <laughs> show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project for Photoshop, okay? So let's go ahead and click on create new. There we go. Now you can kind of ignore some of the things that I've already created because I've done this um, I've done this session a few times already. So what I want you to pay attention to though is on the right-hand side. 
um, it says preset details. So if you are going to be creating, now let's do a different one. Let's do, for this one, let's do a card, okay? So let's do a square, no, let's do portrait card, which the width is 250 and the height is 400. So I'm gonna type in portrait up here at the top. My width, I know this just because we've given the dimensions, right? So the width is gonna be 250 pixels, right? The height is going to be 400 because it's my portrait and we've given you those dimensions. And you can see right here, the orientation is great for a portrait. My DPI or resolution, we have it already set at 72, which is great, we don't have to do much. And the color mode, you can essentially leave this the way it, it comes up. There's not much more you have to do here. Then you're gonna click create. So you're gonna come up with this template. Now there are other ways you can do this. Just because I'm showing you this way doesn't mean that it's the, the best or the right way. I just found it to be one of the easiest ways. So the reason I like this is because now I can upload my photo and it will automatically set to the size that I need for my portrait to file, place embedded. This one's a little bit different because it's not typically going to be save as or upload or export. Um, we're gonna do something a little bit different where we're gonna click on place embedded. That's the only weird thing um, that I learned about this particular piece. So you're gonna click on place embedded and I'm gonna do my profile pic because this is what we're essentially using as for an example. So we're gonna do my profile pic and then I click open. And so right now, I do have this all saved in, in black and white previously because that's what we're working on. Um, I'll show you how to go back and actually, I've uploaded it and it's already the dimensions that I want. I actually don't need to move this at all, but you can, if you want to. You can move these however you'd like to fit them into the picture. Typically it would look something like this and you'd have to maneuver it to fit into your template. But there's not much else that I need to do here. And so, let me, um, perfect. So I'm, I'm essentially done editing this photo. And so I can still save as uh, the same way that I did before. I can go and uh, save as, make sure that I put a very specific title to this. So I'm gonna go under my cascade. This is portrait. I'm gonna do, Um, and then make sure that we save this as a JPEG. For some reason, it's not. So just JPEG and then save and we're all done. I am going to show you one more option um, to go through this because of the black and white. And I want to make sure that we're all set. Um, for this, when this pops up after you save it, you'll get some image options, the quality maximum. So I already know it's saved with kind of where I want. Do you see where it says it's 54K, 54 kilobytes? That's well within what it is that I'm looking for. So I could just select, okay. And so let's go ahead and let's open, let's do new. This is essentially where you would go as soon as you open up. And I'm not sure why everything is all black and white. So let's go ahead and do another one. Now, this is what I love about Photoshop is the one that I've created that I have my 250 by 400 template. So I can go back here and click on that every single time instead of creating a new one. I have that template is in there always. And so I can go in there, click on my custom tablet and do you see all of the numbers are still there. So I've already done that with some of these other ones. So I have here my 960, 450, which is my slideshow. And so let me do another one just to show you the clipboard on, on how we can do that. So let's go ahead and create a Jumbotron. So Jumbotron, does anybody remember the sizes for Jumbotron? 1920 by 600. Yes, that's awesome. Thank you. I still use my cheat sheet. 1920 by 600. So um, I have my pixels, my 600, my orientation, it changed for me automatically because the size of the picture. I still have my 72 DPI or resolution. Um, I'm going to change this into color.
Well, that's interesting. Let me go ahead and create. So this is what your Jumbotron template will look like. And let me see if I, I fix that color for us and, and see if I can upload that another picture for us too. So we're going to click on place embedded. Um, and I am going to go ahead and we'll put clouds in here and we'll see how that looks. So do you see how it came through pretty small? So I'm going to go ahead and start filling in this and see what it will look like for us. Now, what's really cool is it still looks fantastic. As I fill in the template, it looks great. And then I could just press enter and it's all filled in. The quality hasn't been sacrificed, which is fantastic. And then I would go in again and I would save this as my Jumbotron. Remember, we're trying to make it as detailed as possible. So I'm gonna to go to Cascade. I'm gonna put Clouds Jumbotron. And then I'm going to also save this again as my JPEG. And then here, this is 255K, so I'm still within that one to 300 goal that we're looking for. So I'm just gonna click OK. Perfect. So we've had two examples with Photoshop. So typically when you change the pixels, I would say majority of the time, it will be within the kilobytes that you're looking for because we're taking it from like 6,000 or 8,000 pixels to like 900. And so the ones like Jumbotron typically will be larger in size. And if it's a little bit over 300, and I think, I think it was Kayla who asked this, it's not the end of the world if there's a picture here or there that's gonna be a little bit larger. Um, but what you can do is with this particular app, I would say updating the pixels and then the quality. So when this popped up, um, I'm gonna show you one more time because there's another way that you could potentially change it. Again, we'll just do test. If that comes up for you, which um, it shouldn't come up too often, but if it does, do you see when this pops up, it has like, it changes the quality is 10 and it's at the maximum. You can actually change this. You can change the quality of the picture. So do you see when I change it to medium? It went to 100 kilobytes. Yeah, okay, yeah, gotcha. That's what I was wondering, like, if you had to redo everything or can you easily just change it through there? No, that's a great question. Okay. I love it. That's fantastic because I did not cover that in the first session, so thank you. And it's, right, it's thank really, you. Um, and it's a really easy step so you don't have to go through and do it all over again, which is how, what I was doing initially when I first started learning Cascade. I would just redo everything over again. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Great question. Okay, so let's go ahead and we are going to move on. We have our photos saved and then we're going to go ahead and move on to Cascade. When you are locating your page in Cascade, it's very similar. This, um, it's very similar in how you're going to upload your, your pictures. So um, a lot of people say, well, why can't I upload it directly to the site that I want it? And, and you can't. You have to upload it to a folder first in Cascade. Then you can place it wherever you'd like into a website. And so um, I use this as an example because this is the, the page I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go into my folder, my group OD folder, and then I'm going to go to catalog courses and my LinkedIn box. Now, yours is not going to say LinkedIn or catalog courses. Yours are going to be different, but you'll see the pathway that we're going to use to get there. And this is where you'll be saving your pictures. What's really cool about this though is that um, your pictures will be housed in wherever they're supposed to go. So it does make it easier for, for downloading. Um, and you can see here in the PowerPoint, um, I'm gonna take you over to the Cascade page, but I've also included these pictures. And I know, um, I think Isabel had asked, um, I do include additional details in the PowerPoint as well. So let me go ahead and take you over to Cascade so I can kind of show you what we're referring to. I am already in Cascade and I'm gonna find the page in which I want my pictures to go. And so let me go ahead and I'm gonna make it easier for myself and I'm gonna to go to OD. I'm gonna to go to catalog courses. Now, every one of your pages will have an IMG folder. If you don't have one in there, it means that nobody's created it yet and you can re you can create it. So you might see if, if your page has been passed on and you've had 20 different people work on your page, 
it can be a little bit hard to organize initially, I would encourage you to build a new file folder and then start with your pictures if you're the one who's gonna be managing it um, and organizing your own pictures. So you'll see random IMG folders in, in each file. So I'm going to the catalog courses and I'm going to LinkedIn because I'm gonna update my LinkedIn page. That's what I'm updating. And so I have my docs and I have my images. I created both of these folders myself and I am going to show you how to create your own folder first, okay? So what I'd recommend that you do is go to your folder, your file folder where you want your pictures to go and you're gonna click on the little arrow here on the right, okay? Once you're there, you can see I already have mine. I'm gonna create a new folder for us that I'm going to delete later. But you're gonna click on add content. There's a plus button at the top with a red circle surrounding it. You're gonna click on add content. The only option to click on here is entity. And you're gonna click on folder. Okay, so this is how we're creating a folder to put all of our pictures in. That's all that we're doing so far. And I know this part, this is the part honestly that's gonna take the most amount of time. Uploading the picture is not that difficult. This part uh, can be a little bit confusing. So if you need me to stop or go over it again, please let me know. And so your folder name, um, I am going to just make this my, because I'm gonna do images. This is where I'm gonna house all my images. Now, it already doesn't like the name here because I, I can't use um, capitals, but that's okay. I could just do use suggested name. It'll change it for me. Um, my folder name, I'm gonna put images. Um, display and navigation, I'm going to put no. So you leave everything as is. And then I'm going to click submit on the top right hand side. So basically this is just creating that folder. Congratulations, I didn't misspell anything. That's fantastic. All right, so we have my new image folder is here, okay? So now I'm in my images folder and I am going to add an entity again or add content, entity. Now, this is where it gets a little bit different because I am going to add the picture as a file. So first we created our folder and now we're creating our file. And this is where I put the image, okay? So I'm now inside the folder. Okay, so now I am going to do my, actually the easiest way is, I'll be honest with you, don't even update the name I'll, and I'll show you why. So we are gonna choose a picture here Let's go back to my pictures. Um, and the one that I just did was Cal Poly Banner 2. And so do you see when I uploaded the picture, it automatically put it up here for me so I don't have to fill it out. Now it doesn't like capital letters, so I'm gonna click use the suggested name and it'll, it'll change it for me. Makes it really, really simple. Now what's great is it tells me here my pixel sizes again, which is fantastic. We would encourage you not to make changes in Cascade. Um, though you have the ability to do so, it's not extremely like fully functional when you're making large changes. So we would recommend that you do that prior. And then I'm gonna preview my draft, which it looks fantastic. And then I'm gonna submit. And I am going to publish this to test because I'm just going to put it in a holding tank. So you could leave it to test. And then once you actually put it on your website, it'll automatically go to production. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you don't recall what publish to production means, that means that it's actually live when you do publish to production. It'll go to the website and people could view it. When you do it to test, you can view it in Cascade, but nobody else can. Okay. And then we're gonna click on start workflow. So now we're ready to go back and look at Cal Poly Cloud Spanner under my images is ready to go. So let me go ahead and we're gonna download another picture just to walk you through it, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the folder that I created, the image folder. 
whenever you want to add pictures or folders or content, you always will have to click here, add content. Remember, I'm just downloading my picture. Entity, and when you're doing a picture, you're going to do file. Now I'm going to choose one from my picture. I'm going to do my profile pic. And again, there's capital letters here. So instead of retyping it, I'm gonna click on use suggested name. It's the size that I want and I can preview draft, submit, publish to test, and then start workflow. So now these pictures are ready for me to put on my website. So I'm gonna go back to file now and I'm gonna show you how to upload some of these pictures, okay? And so I'm going to go back to my catalog courses because this is where I want to work on my LinkedIn site, right? Okay, so here is my current page. Now you're going to see a lot of random pictures here because of what we're doing with all of our um, All of our changes and just pictures that we've added. So when we go to update our pictures, we're going to click on edit in the top right hand side and I'm going to show you how to first do text and images. When the Jumbotron selection, we did create a banner for that. And so um, I can show you that briefly because this one is pretty quick. Um, what you would do is you would click on the picture here that you want to update. The Jumbotron is probably one of the easiest ones to upload and, um, and make a pretty dynamic change on your website. So when you click on the picture on the right hand side, you're going to see recent. So if you've just saved your photo, it will populate here. So do you see where I put Cal Poly clouds banner? That's available to you here. And so I'm just going to go ahead. You may not see a significant change because it's the same picture, but you can click on it and you'll see the picture that's available to you and then just click choose. And we've already made the change. Now I'm going to make additional changes. So I'm not gonna preview my draft just yet. I wanna show you a few other pieces. So let's show you how to do text and images. So I'm gonna to go to my content page and in here, I'm gonna select a text and images, okay? For this, it's a lot of fun. I'm gonna get rid of this LinkedIn. So it says insert pictures here. Let me just get rid of that for you. There's a little picture icon you're going to use and you're going to click insert picture. And this is internal picture. So I'm going to choose my file. Um, and I'm going to choose again. I am going to go ahead and choose my profile picture. So I just used it. Profile pick is here. I know I have the right one and I'm going to choose. It gives me the dimensions. Um, on this one, you do want to make sure you update the image description. I'm just going to put profile picture of a woman. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And there you go. So the, this process is, and that will, will change as we preview the draft, you'll be able to see the, the high resolution quality. So we're all done with text and images. That's how easy it is to put the photo into text and images. Now let's do another one. So I'm going to take out the content here and I am going to do the cards actually are going to be a little bit harder to update, but I do want to get you I want to give you an example of what it looks like because you're going to need to play with this a little bit more. We are going to have one session on just cards because there's so much to do here. But if you are already intermediate and advanced, I do want to show you how to put the picture there just in case. So I am going to come down to my cards are already set. Again, if you haven't used cards before, I would just recommend that you're just doing auto for now and then make sure the cards are aligned just so it can look nice and um, and consistent on your page. I'm going down to adaptability. Um, I have already pictures, um, but here it says managing teams. And so I'm going to change that to adaptability. The title of your card is going to go here. And then this is the picture. 
anytime you can see an image, that's where you're going to go for your picture. That, that's how you can easily identify it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on picture. And again, on the right hand side, all the pictures that I already put in my folder are here. And so I already saved one previously called adaptability. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose. And so this one now we can't really see until I've previewed my draft. So I've already updated all of my pictures. I'm going to preview draft now. So we should be able to see all of the changes that I've made. So this is the new picture that I've uploaded in my Jumbotron. It's the same picture, so it's hard to see the difference, right? Um, you see my profile picture, which is ginormous on this page because I put it into text and images. And then I put adaptability icon. I added that under my card. So this, if you're unfamiliar with cards, this is what cards look like. You don't have to use pictures for cards though. It, it's a really cool uh, opportunity if you are just writing about something or giving information that you don't have to use pictures, but they are fun to kind of explain uh, what else will be available. So when I say the icons in those free websites we were talking about, I got these from Elements in Votto. So when you go into the sites or typically, let's say content at the very top, this text is typically for you, whatever you put there. Um, but what you put down in the image, when you click on your images and upload the image descriptions, that is going to be for accessibility purposes. So let me go ahead and just go back. So we're going to preview draft. We've already looked at our changes. Once you've made the changes and you want them to be live, remember, there's two things you can do. So if you're not ready for it to go live, which I definitely don't want this to go live because the pictures don't make sense and my big face is on there, we don't want that. So I'm going to publish a test because it'll save it for me. I can continue to work on it later. If you're ready for it to go live and you want the world to see, you're going to click on publish to production. So we're going to check content and click submit. This is where, again, it checks spelling. Look at, I spelled adaptability wrong. So I need to go back and make that change. This is a really great example of how you can use this process to help you. Once we go through spelling, we're going to go to broken links by clicking on this arrow. Now the broken links feature, just keep in mind, um, this doesn't always work at 100% accuracy. So chances are that many of these links are not broken, especially if you just use them. But if there is a new link that you're putting up, you might want to just double check it. And then accessibility, it's saying view non-compliant content. So I know I need to go back and check that later as well. And then I'm going to finish. And then once I'm done, I'm going to click on start workflow. Anytime we're done, whether we're publishing to test or production, in order to save it, we're going to click on start to workflow. And then we're done. So all of those changes that I have, I didn't make it live, but all of the changes are here for me to view and change and edit. So I know this was a lot of information, everyone, and I hope that you were able to take something from it.